Hello, everyone. This is Robert from Book of Mormon Editions, where we discuss printings, publications, and various editions of the Book of Mormon. While I've referenced the following edition of the Book of Mormon in other videos, I'm looking through my notes and realized that I had yet to do a full book review here. So today, I'd like to take some time and make a video on one of the editions of the Book of Mormon that has one of the lasting effects to Book of Mormon context, content, and printing. We speak of the 1841 Great Britain edition of the Book of Mormon. So here we go. A little background was that many of the Twelve Apostles were called in the late 1830s to travel abroad as missionaries for the church. This included Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, and Parley P. Pratt traveling to Great Britain in order to establish the church overseas and to encourage converts to move to America and join the saints. Brigham Young was also, also authorized to, to print a new copy of the Book of Mormon. This is why the title page lists this as the first European volume taken from the second American printing. The reason is that Brigham Young took an 1837 Kirtland volume to England to use as the source material for this European printing. The other factor regarding this is that Joseph Smith was in Nauvoo in 1840 and had authorized a Nauvoo printing. This included a number of edits that Joseph was personally satisfied with. However, Brigham Young used the 1837 volume and was unaware of the 1840 volume while he was overseas. So the updates of the 1840 edition never went into the 1841 printing. This 1841 printing was in similar small size, similar to the 1837 copy, as these were considered pocket editions or volumes small enough to put in a satchel or an overcoat pocket. Brigham Young authorized 4,050 copies with a British printer. An interesting aspect of this is set is that there is a number of bindings and covers. About half of them were plain brown leather with a title ribbon. I would imagine these were the common missionary copies. The other half contained a myriad of various covers, mostly in brown or black leather. It was also known that the British binderies had an option for very fancy decorations on the cover and spine. This included a number of spine impressions with decorations on various panel sections. The cover also was just as decorative with a number of gold lines and adornments. It seems that the black cover with gold decorative work was reserved as these unique ones ended up in the hands of some noteworthy people. For example, Emma Smith had one of these copies that is now held in a presidential library, and Hiram Smith's Carthage Jail copy uh, was in this design also. We'll probably do individual re reviews of these copies at a later time. But all in all, there was a number of various covers for this 1841 printing. What's also worthy to take some time on is understanding that the majority of these copies are now in the United States, and often many of these copies are in less than pristine condition, which includes reconditioning and new covers. However, as beat up as these can be, it means that these were in the hands of English immigrants that came and gave up all they had in Great Britain to join a new American church and join the Mormon pioneers as they made a new life for themselves all for a book and the message of the restored gospel it contained. So I hope that even though this volume might be overshadowed by other editions, I hope that there's some sense of appreciation for this 1841 Book of Mormon and the significance behind it. Thanks everyone for watching this. I'm excited for some really good news in the next few weeks and look forward to sharing more content here. If you have a special or unique edition of the Book of Mormon that you'd like reviewed here, please contact me at bomeditions at gmail.com. Best wishes, everyone.